In this video, we're going to take a look at some more date functions. First of all, let's put a date into cell A1 here. So I'll put today's date in. I'm doing this on the 8th of August, 2019. And I'll make this just a little bit wider here. Okay. And as you know, this is a serial number representing a date. If I go up here and change it to general, I find out that it's the 43,685th day since January 1st of the year 1900. But let's go back and format this as a short date. Now, there may be times when you import some data from someplace and you have all of the uh, dates in a single field like this one is. But what you need to do is you need to extract some of the data from the date. So this is actually three components. And you may want to pull out the month, you may want to pull out the day, you may want to pull out the year. And I'm going to change this just so that the day and the uh, month are not the same number so that when we do some of these functions here, we'll see a difference. There is a function that will let you pull out the month. So let's do month, and it's, that's what's called. And you notice when you do the left parenthesis, it says serial number. Now, serial number means a date serial number, or just a date. And I've got to provide it with a cell that has a date serial number in it, which is A1. And close the parentheses and hit enter. And it extracts the month, the number 8. There's a similar function for extracting the day, which is just called day. And if you give it a serial number, in this case A1 again, it will extract the number 10. And there is, as you can probably guess, there's one that will extract the year part as well. So I want the year of A1 and hit enter and it gives me 2019. Now there may also be times when you get a column with, I'm just going to take this and drag it up here. I'm going to take this and, and drag it up here. So you may have a column with the month, a column with the day, a column with the year. There may be times when you want to go in the other direction. You may be given some data that has a column with the month, a column with the day, and a column with the year in it. And what you want to do is you want to put them all together and have a date in Excel. And the function for that is called date. And let's type in the word date in a left parenthesis. And you get a list of the arguments that it's expecting. And in the United States, we usually do month first, and then the day, and then the year. And so you got to be careful. Do not enter the data in that order. It goes from big units of time down to small units of time. So the first thing it wants is the year, which is over here in D1. And then type a comma. And then it wants the month, which is over here in B1. And then type a comma. And the last thing it wants is the day, which is here in C1. So just... Uh, follow the little tooltip there and make sure you order, you enter the data in the correct order and everything will be fine. And now we should get the same thing we have in A1 if we do that. You notice the pound signs popped up there for a fraction of a second and then it made the column wider so that we could see the entire date. So if I go back over here now and I change this to Christmas Day and hit enter, this extracts the 12. For the month, this extracts the 25 for the day, this extracts the 2019 for the year, and this puts them all back together again to form the original date. Now there's one more related function that I want to show you, and that is the weekday function. It will tell you which day of the week a certain date was. So let's do equals weekday, and it is expecting a serial number. And you notice there's a second argument there, but it's in square brackets, which means that it is optional. So I have to provide it with a serial number. I'm going to provide it with A1. And then we're going to close parentheses and hit enter. And it gives me the number 4. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's click on the little FX over here. It'll bring up our function arguments dialog box. And the first argument is a serial number. Notice it's in bold, which means it's required. Return type is not bold, which means if you don't put it in, it will use a default value. And the default value is this first one here. Uh, Sunday is 1 and Saturday is 7, which is the way we would most people would probably number the days of the week. And it says use a 1, but if you don't put anything in there, it uses the 1. Uh, if you put a 2 in there, then Monday becomes the first day of the week. If you put a 3 in there, then Monday is day 0 and Sunday is day number 6. So if you want to start counting at 0. Uh, it doesn't look like there's an option there for making Sunday day number 0. So those are your three options. If you don't put anything in, then you get probably what most of you would expect. So... Uh, day number four, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that tells us that in the year 2019, 
uh, Christmas is going to fall right smack in the middle of the week. It's going to fall on a Wednesday. Now, if you'd rather not have this, then uh, there are some other things you can do. Let's make ourselves a little lookup table over here. And if you don't know how the lookup table works, there's a video on VLOOKUP that you can check out. And we're going to number the days. And I'm going to use the autofill here and number those from 1 to 7. And now what I've got is a little lookup table. And so I can tell Excel to look here and find that number in this lookup table. And then when I find it, jump over to column 2 and return the day of the week. So my days of the week are a little bit wider than this. So we're going to do a lookup here. Equals V lookup. And it wants to know the value I'm looking up. I'm looking up the 4. Comma. It wants to know the table array. So this is my lookup table. And usually you want to make that an absolute cell reference. So I'm going to hit F4 to put the dollar signs in. And then it wants to know what column do we find the value to return. Well, the value to return is in the second column of our table. And we can close parentheses here. We don't need that fourth argument. And hit Enter. And it'll tell us that that's a Wednesday. Now, if I go over here and type in 1226, whoops, 2019 and hit enter. Uh, that's the fifth day of the week. That's a Thursday. And notice all my other stuff got updated here as well. So those are five functions that uh, come in handy when you're dealing with dates. If you go to the formulas tab up here and click on date and time, uh, there's a whole bunch more than five. Uh, but these are what I think are some of the most useful functions if you are working with dates in Excel.